So uh, just to, I will skip a few slides, otherwise it will be coming uh, quite uh, frustrating not to show uh, what I wanted to, to show. So uh, one important aspect, and Sam briefly uh, uh, mentioned that, is uh, we, we are not, uh, to make a, a forecast nowadays, we moved from this paradigm of uh, deterministic forecast uh, towards a probabilistic forecast, because this is the best approach to predict the weather. And this is an example of uh, three uh, uh, different forecast runs from the high resolution, so the nine kilometer forecast for a specific date and time. Okay, so this is focusing on a, on the uh, on the same on the same date, verification date. And if you look to all of them, uh, it's clear that the large scale is well captured for a forecast. Let's say starting this morning or last Saturday, or, or even on Thursday uh, last week. But, uh, uh, and you see the, the, the pressure, the low, the cyclone over the UK, the high pressure over the Atlantic is there. But if you look more, in, uh, more close, uh, in, you know, let's say, if you focus on cer certain regions uh, in Europe, you see slightly differences, okay? So as, as we get close to the event, as we use new observations, the model tries to uh, provide a slightly different uh, uh, scenarios uh, uh, for, the, for, that, uh, for the same event, okay? And the best approach is, in fact, to use this multimodal or the ensemble approach, which is basically trying to perturb the initial conditions and perturb the, the model parameterizations uh, to represent, uh, as Sam uh, explained before, to, to represent the model errors and the observation errors or the uncertainties, not knowing uh, what is going on at the initial conditions due to the uh, scarcity of, of observations. So what we produce is an ensemble of models trying to represent these uncertainties in the future. And, and, and for that, we use different, let's say, different uh, ways of represent the, the, the uncertainty. So what we, we have here is a kind of a, a, just a small flavor of what we are using. So uh, you know, imagine for specific location like Reading, where I'm living now, uh, we have what we call the meteograms. And the meteograms, uh, as you should see on the left side, is uh, shows uh, is represented in this box plot. So basically, we sorted out the 51 uh, values for cloud cover or uh, uh, precipitation in six hours or wind speed. And we try to rank all these values from the lowest value to the high values, and we uh, display in this box plot. So we have, let's say, for temperature, if you look to, for instance, for Sunday, the 11th of July, we see that the temperature can go from 24 degrees maximum to 18 degrees minimum for a specific time of that day, okay? And this is the uncertainty associated with the with the forecast okay uh, uh, of course if we have a more predictable uh, 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 situation then of course these bars will collapse and we will have something that is similar in the first days as you, as you can see there on on the on the first days of the forecast on the other side we also want to see how unusual the weather will be comparing with the, with the with the climate and this climate is not the observation climate okay using the observation over the last let's say 20 years but is using you know what we call the model model to run past dates so what we call the reforecast and create a model climatology which in theory should not be uh, very different from the observation climatology of that lo specific location. And what you see is a different way to display the data is these shaded colors on the background of this uh, meteogram, so the middle panel here, 
shows basically the evolution of temperature, uh, maximum or minimum temperature in blue and red, uh, according with this with the climatology for the season. Okay, and you see that for this all 15 days, we have basically the forecast telling that the temperature will be within the uh, the, the mean values for the for that season. Okay. But also we can design the products in order to highlight unusual, what is the risk of unusual weather. And we call it this extreme forecast index, basically comparing the, the distribution, these 51 member distribution values for wind gusts with, with the distribution of the model climatology and see that higher values represent unusual weather for the season over specific places like here in the... Uh, 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 channel, uh, uh, the channel, and the uh, and the Benelux and northern part of France. Also, for the we produce uh, another type of product is this weekly anomalies. I will skip that. This is another product that we use. Uh, we we produce using the ensemble so to generate the tracks for tropical cyclones, and and uh, and of course. Uh, another important, uh, uh, let's say, task is to evaluate our forecast. So what we have here is a, an objective score, what we call the six-day forecast anomaly correlation, where we compare our model with the other models. And you see that looking to these three time series, there are some times that we, uh, for a specific region at a specific time step, we are better than other models or the other models are better than us. And this allow us, for instance, to, for instance, a specific day, let's say the 26th of May, we were very bad compared with the, the UK Met Office or the NSEP, okay? And this will uh, uh, allow us to start a, a diagnostic uh, uh, analysis to understand why we were uh, uh, worse than the others was uh, as, an as, assimilation issue was a, a predictability issue was uh, model errors uh, so there is a lot of uh, let's say uh, 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 let's say there is a lot of uh, um, aspects that we can uh, uh, look at it to understand why specific uh, uh, situations were poorly handled by the model. And how you do that, when, when, when the way is to look to these verification maps where you put, let's say, the forecast of precipitation in 24 hours overlaid with a, um, what exactly what we 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 do in terms of processing this uh, this this diagnostics is we 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 basically try to every day uh, identify problems in the model, uh, try to put them on a daily report. So as you see, there is here the a, a slide where it shows the daily report, and then on a weekly basis on Fridays we try to summarize the findings. Of, of this five days uh, analysis and have, a, a, let's say, a, a 30 minute discussion with the colleagues in house where we try to summarize these new findings and find solutions or uh, another, another possibilities to uh, uh, have a deeper investigation of, uh, of these problems. And of course, this will, uh, uh, Wrap is wrap up in a what we call the quarterly evaluation meeting, where we basically try to pick up, let's say, uh, highlight cases which we we think that are 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 a good example of um, uh, uh, a good example of uh, let's say um, investigation uh, uh, paths, and of course. All these uh, will feedback somehow in in research activities. So the idea is once we feed up with these cases into the research, they will try to evaluate what went wrong. If you know, could be a parameterization issue, could be a problem of uh, 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 data simulation, and so on. Oh. 
on. And, and, and the idea is in the long term, the idea is to uh, improve more robust system uh, in order to provide more accurate uh, for us. And I will finish here. I already have two minutes. Sorry for all the IT aspects. Um, and uh, uh, I hope you will have some questions that I can answer later on. Thank you very much.